Hi, very good morning. I am Dr. Chanak Patel. Today I am going to talk on uh, another topic in nephrology that is chronic glomerulonephritis. Glomerulonephritis, which lasts for more than three months, usually termed as chronic glomerulonephritis. So, we will be talking on this particular topic. Definition etiology, pathophysiology, clinical features, investigations, differential diagnosis, treatment and complications. The meaning of chronic glomerulonephritis, it is basically a kidney disorder where etiology is very slow, there is a cumulative damage and there is a scarring of the kidney. Usually this is by inflammation of tiny glomerulus. The glomerulus removes waste product from blood. The inflammation will result into either because of nephrotic variety or nephritic variety of glomerular damage. All form of acute glomerulonephritis have got a tendency to go into chronic glomerulonephritis. The condition is characterized by irreversible progressive glomerular and interstitial tubular interstitial fibrosis which will end into small size kidney with scar. This will result into reduction in the GFR and because of reduction in the GFR there will be effect on retention of uremic toxins, electrolyte imbalance, protein, anemia, as well as there will be elevation of uric acid and calcium imbalance, etc. The most common cause of chronic glomerular nephritis is idiopathic. Another common group is we call as a non-streptococcal glomerulonephritis that is because of virus, hepatitis B or hepatitis C sometimes by HIV virus, etc. Autoimmune disorders which produces vasculitis like SLE is also a very common cause for glomerulonephritis. And acute glomerulonephritis, we have already told you that it will go into a chronic stage. This slide we have already shown you in acute glomerulonephritis. Post-tryptococcal Acute glomerulonephritis can end up with chronic, but the incidence is 1 to 2 percent. While in variety of a rapidly progressive glomerulonephritis, 90 percent of the time it will go into chronic glomerulonephritis. Membranous variety, vocal glomerulosclerosis, membranoproliferative, and IgA variety is almost to 50 percent, or sometimes even 50 to 80 percent of the cases. And some conditions which produces chronic glomerulonephritis are rare. We will be talking of those. As far as pathophysiology is concerned, we have already shown you this slide that in a variety of an acute, which is post tryptococcal there is a damage to glomerular basement membrane which will result in hematuria and proteinuria. And because of immune injury to the tubules and glomerulus, which will produce cellular infiltration, proliferation, and will result into decreased GFR, which will produce oliguria, sodium and water retention, which will end up with edema and hypertension. But when this continues, the person from acute will go into a chronic variety and then finally into chronic kidney failure, or we call as a CKD, and then end stage renal disease. And this slide also I have shown you in an acute glomerulonephritis that repeated episodes of acute glomerulonephritis will result into hardening of arteries, reduction in the size, scarring of the tissue, severe glomerular damage and then into end stage renal failure. This is a diagram which shows you a normal kidney which will slowly become smaller in size. The word commonly utilized is contracted granular kidney but it is not because of the myocardial contraction or muscular contraction, it is because of the scarring. That's, but still, word utilized is contracted kidney. So, it is a scarring of the kidney which produces small size kidney. So, kidney becomes small size 
there is lot of scarring and that is a classical example of a chronic glomerulonephritis in clinical features good number of time it presents as a abnormality in the urine like hematuria which can be dark colored urine rusty colored urine or brown color urine because of presence of small quantity of protein 1 plus to 2 plus it gives rise to foamy urine and because of hypoproteinemia facial puffiness mild generalized anasarca swelling of the limbs that is we call edema puffiness of face fluid accumulation in different cavities like ascites pleural effusion etc because of anemia persistent anemia the person complains of shortness of breath weakness fatigability leg cramps and chronic kidney failure symptoms and signs will show you because of urea accumulation and that will produce drowsiness somnolence lethargy confusion delirium and sometime even uremic encephalopathy with uremic flux person may also have easy bleeding malaise hypertension we call as a renal hypertension or secondary hypertension edema decreased urine formation maybe oliguria or sometime even the urine output is close to normal severe itching because of the urea accumulation muscle twitching cramps sometimes even uremic seizures nausea vomiting and seizure may be also because of electrolyte imbalance and cerebral edema the classical finding is hypertension chronic kidney disorders finding like low gfr and secondary finding because of decreased gfr protein urea small size kidney with scarring on ultrasound hence hematuria oliguria protein urea generalized anasarca hypertension are the classical finding of a chronic glomerulonephritis so again hypertension protein urea generalized anasarca uremic frost what we call is azotemia or uremia uric mic uremic sweating out excess of stinky urea which forms crystals and that is given a name uremic frost which is a good number of time identified in a case of a chronic glomerulonephritis so coco cola color urine diluted ice tea colored urine classical hematuria foamy urine etc is a common finding we have already shown you this slide before hypertension fluid retention fatigue weakness anemia and oliguria sometime even the person can get nocturia so this is a slide which shows you three types of presentation heavy protein urea which will be very typical of a minimal change focal sclerosis membranous variety diabetes mellitus or amyloidosis predominantly hematuria in case of a post streptococcal crescentic variety hemolytic uremic syndrome and a mixed picture in a lupus membrano proliferative infective endocarditis anoxonal and purpura depending upon the etiology you can have a mixture of the picture acute glomerulonephritis usually will progress into chronic that will go into ckd and end stage renal failure in investigations history physical examination and systemic examination of elementary system cns cvs and rs becomes very very useful cbc gives you little idea regarding the effect of a renal damage and person invariably will have a pancytopenia leukopenia anemia and even thrombocytopenia urine will show you abnormality like hematuria protein urea cast will be present and depending upon the type of the damage you can have an additional findings blood urea creatinine is mildly elevated which usually is irreversible damage and later on there is a gradual increase in the blood urea and creatinine if the damage continues there will be hypoproteinemia uric acid level will be elevated hypocalcemia as far as sodium and potassium is concerned depending upon the stage and depending upon the intake of different materials like sodium and potassium the sodium balance will be abnormal usually person will have a hypernatremia hyperkalemia and acidosis 
you find out the effect on the kidney and the size of the kidney kub ct scan and ultrasound gives you an idea regarding a small size kidney with scarring renal biopsy is indicated in very few conditions to find out the exact etiology of a chronic disorders antibody studies is useful in a case of a immune mediated chronic glomerulonephritis and you will be going for hepatitis b hepatitis c etc to find out the etiology chest x ray is useful to find out the effect on pericardium like pericarditis pericardial effusion abdominal ct scan for kidney abnormalities ivp should be done only after creatinine le level if person is in a state 4 and 5 ivp or iv urography is contraindicated urine analysis is very very useful and all the parameter i will talk about blood urea creatinine calcium sodium potassium phosphorus uric acid serum protein cbc ph bicarbonate and parathormone parathormone will be also abnormal parathormone level will be elevated all these investigations are useful once you confirm the diagnosis of a chronic glomerulonephritis the treatment is symptomatic if person is having a secondary due to immune mediated glomerulonephritis then immunosuppression is very useful treatment where steroid methotrexate and cyclophosphamide are the drug of choice depending upon the complication the treatment should be done example if person has got anemia you will have to give iron by and large iv rather than oral with epo that is erythropoietin products if person has got hypoproteinemia you will have to give protein either orally or iv but protein is restricted good number of times calcium imbalance should be treated by giving calcium and phosphate levels are elevated so it should be treated by giving phosphomimetics etc always there should be done a good follow up for finding out the prognosis and what complications person has developed so the treatment is divided into pharmacological therapy renal replacement therapy diet and activity so patient education is absolutely necessary regular exercise maintenance of bmi walking exercise swimming bicycling aerobic exercise etc to increase the function of different organs and also it improves the function of kidney diuretic is usually to reduce the fluid retention and also it helps in decrease blood pressure main treatment is suppress the immune system whenever there is an immune mediated damage to kidney in lifestyle changes restriction of sodium and restriction of water intake depending upon the water balance and sodium potassium restriction is good number of time advice phosphorus and magnesium is also restricted protein is cut down in diet because excess of protein will result into formation of a urea which will worsen the conditions maintain the healthy weight by diet and exercise calcium supplement is necessary because invariably person will have a hypocalcemia so all these are necessary depending upon the different stages in initial stage of asymptomatic hypertension bed rest look for symptoms and signs as the blood pressure goes on increasing now you will have to control the blood pressure by diuretics and calcium channel blocker and if that does not work out you might have to add the other groups of drugs if person does not improve and person worsens and he goes into a end stage renal failure he will require renal replacement therapy initially peritoneal dialysis followed by hemodialysis and when that fails person will require renal transplant in complications hypoproteinemia is the most common complications hypertension we call secondary hypertension or renal hypertension 
in electrolyte imbalance sodium potassium imbalance initially it is always hypernatremia hyperkalemia but depending upon the diuretic complications intake of foods etc you can have a hyponatremia or even hypokalemia calcium is always hypocalcemia in some of the people you can have even a magnesium imbalance like hypomagnesemia and phosphate level is always elevated among acid base imbalance by and large the person will have acidosis depending upon the treatment side the person can develop other complications uremia and uremic complications are most common complications because of retention of urea and end stage renal failure invariably will have a high mortality so that is a last thing so here i end the lecture i hope this is useful to you see you next time in next lecture